Once again, the clocks have been altered. We mere humans have manipulated the very fabric of time once again, creating an extra hour for us to complain about how terrible things are in the world. Just like Doctor Strange and Doctor Doc and Doctor Who and Doctor Blue and Ashton Kutcher, in real life, we too have controlled time through adjusting Greenwich Mean Time, which I think is exactly like when Doctor Strange moves his arm so that special effects can be applied afterwards to make you think it's significant in some way in the Avengers series. About two and a half thousand years ago, Aristotle said, time is the most unknown of all unknowns. And not a lot has changed. Scientists still can't tell us exactly what time is. That might surprise you or it might not. But if you start reading into time and universes and thermodynamics and entropy, then you'll fuck your head. Even if you're quite sciencey and clever, you'll start to doubt the very meaning of existence. So be very careful. Time, the fourth dimension, is not to be trifled with. That being said, I'm going to talk about how scientists define and understand time as it is, uh, the research going into time, and what time means to us in real terms. Early answers for what is time were, oh, it's something God's made, upon which a later variation was, oh, it's something Allah's done. And then we basically replaced the various uncopyrighted names for God with loads of other shit, depending on whose turn it was to make something up. Time, as the average person knows it, are clocks ticking and putting appointments in your Google calendar. But really, these measurements we have of time are, and I read this, incidental physical manifestations of the underlying concept which i could have thought of if i thought of it but in scientific terms we know that time is thought of as the fourth dimension in three-dimensional space the 3d movements are of course up and down left and right backwards and forwards you can physically see those movements of a thing but you can't see time we can only measure it in human terms like when you can't see how awful Christmas is, but you can measure it. Actually, no, that's totally wrong. You can see how shit Christmas is and hear it and experience it. Okay, that's not the right analogy, but anyway, you can't measure time, but this was a good way to plug my next video early, which will be me having a go at Christmas ads, just like last year, but I think with a bit more depth this time around. So far, we know time only goes in one direction, forwards, because in reality, no one that we know of has gone back in time. Although many people are entirely regressive and talk like they have gone back in time. But why? why why does time appear to flow in just one direction? The British physicist Arthur Eddington called this the arrow of time. The arrow of time is based on ideas from an Austrian physicist who I think was a bodybuilder like all Austrians are brought up to be, Ludwig Boltzmann. He was knocking about in the 1870s and his thing was all about entropy, which obviously everyone knows what that is, but I'll tell you anyway, it's a measurement for disorder. Things can only become more disordered over time. They can't become reordered. Aging is disorder. It can't go back. People get good plastic surgery, but essentially they're painting over a cracked wall. If you accidentally smash a glass on the floor, that's entropy. It's disorder. It's a random event that occurs in the future. When I smashed my foot racing a motorbike because I'm cool and crashed at 100 miles per hour, that was entropy. So the Brit scientist, the Britsist Eddington, he believed the arrow of time was somehow connected to entropy. He said, if as we follow the arrow, we find more and more of the random element in the state of the world, then the arrow is pointing towards the future. If the random element decreases, the arrow points towards the past. That is the only distinction known to physics. That's why we can't go back in time with a shitty green pebble or a really impractical car with very cool wing doors. The question of why time is irreversible is one of the biggest unresolved questions of science of all time, along with all the other unresolved questions of science that are the biggest ones of all time. Like, why is anyone who's ever in charge of anything important a complete fucking idiot? Science is a mystery indeed. One explanation is the natural world follows the laws of thermodynamics. Now, the second law of thermodynamics, and there are about a thousand million laws. Actually, I, I think there might be four laws. The second law states that within a closed system, the entropy of the system remains constant or increases. So if the universe is considered to be a closed system, its entropy, the degree of disorder, can never decrease. 
As time moves forward, it becomes more disordered. Therefore, the universe cannot return to exactly the same state in which it was at an earlier point. Time cannot move backward. For most of us, we don't even need to know this fourth dimension time stuff. All animals have a way of tracking time naturally. The suprachiasmatic, which is probably the wrong pronunciation, nuclei of the brain is the region responsible for daily or circadian rhythms. Circadian rhythm is the natural 24 hour wake and sleep cycle most of us follow, except in Fight Club. But as some of you know, only too well indeed, wink wink, drugs affect time perceptions. Chemicals that excite neurons so they fire more quickly than normal, they speed up time perception, while decreased neuron firing slows down time perception. So when time seems to speed up, the brain is seeing more events within an interval. And actually scientists continue to look into the role emotions play in the way we perceive time. When you're scared, time slows down. When you're excited and happy, which quite often can be when you're shagging, time speeds up. And this is the underlying thing behind Einstein's relativity of time, not my shagging point. Although actually you get these stories that scientists have as to why they started looking into something in the first place. You've got the Newton gravity apple falling on his head thing. Well, what if Einstein, he just finished a quick cheeky wank and one day thought, fuck, that was quick. But actually time hasn't passed any quicker than usual while I was wanking. I need to look into this. But you probably know about Einstein's special theory of relativity, where time is relative and passes depending on your frame of reference. Observers in two different frames of reference don't always agree on when an event happened or how long it took. 30 seconds of my stimulating conversation will only seem like one hour, because I'm so boring, obviously. Anyway, that's just a very simplified way of explaining Einstein's stuff. I took the time this afternoon to go over his formula and just check it's all correct and I can confirm it's correct. And in fact, I, I condensed it down to this short equation and uh, I think that's right. It's a weird one this, because you'd think who would give funding to research into time? Quantum computers, robots, climate change, disease, weapons. These are all things with lots of work and funding going into them for good or for bad. Research into time and understanding what it is and how to manipulate it. It's got to be a low priority science, surely? No, there's quite a lot of research going on into this, actually. And obviously America are looking into time via their research military institute, DARPA. They clearly want to be able to go back in time and fuck everyone in some way, although the fact that we have this reality means maybe they haven't done it yet. So DARPA are looking at time crystals. This is the explanation of time crystals. In the same way that atoms are arranged periodically in space to form a crystal, they can also be arranged periodically in time to form a crystal. I don't know what that means, but there was a lot of maths involved and they couldn't even make these crystals till 2016. And they're a different form of matter from solids, liquids, and gases. I did find a further explanation on time crystals. So if you have a structure like a crystal, and to be clear, the definition of a crystal is a solid material with a highly ordered microscopic atomic structure. So if you zoom in on salt, you can see it's a crystal. And as you zoom in more like to the atomic level, the atoms can be seen as predictable in their physical arrangement. Time crystals have atoms that are not predictable and they videoed this and it won't mean a lot to you and I, but this is something very different that scientists have discovered. They think they'll be using quantum computers like in that BBC series where they had a, a video of Jesus Christ because the computer could do that. Um, but I didn't have the stamina to see the stupid ending. Another study we've got is the study of time perception, which mixes up a load of shit like linguistics and neuroscience and cognitive psychology and attention research to explore the ways people feel the minutes and hours pass. And obviously there will be drugs involved here. But it's quite a credible study. Uh, neuroscientists in Europe, including this Nobel Prize bloke, Edward Moser, they've been using optogenetics. That's how you control and measure neurons. So basically time travel and mind control. You know, as a species, I think we've really been asking for it for a while, but we are properly asking for complete extinction now. We've got Birmingham University looking at time travel. I mean, great, but you know, can we really trust something so potentially cataclysmic to the very fabric of our existence to coming out of Birmingham where they can barely speak English? Luckily though, we have the very well-spoken University of Surrey to balance that out. 
and they've just had a couple of millions stuffed into their pockets like a 50 pound note tip to study the fundamental nature of time and its potential to reveal scientific and philosophical insights into the quantum world. I wonder who's got the balls enough to take that on. I'll tell you who, Professor Jim Al Khalili and Dr. Andrea Rocco, also known as Jim and Rocky, the ultimate time research team. Jimmy actually looks pretty hardcore qualified, professor of theoretical physics and distinguished chair in physics. Rocky equally has a shitload of things going on. There's also another cool study about time travel where a lot of numbers have been crunched using a quantum time travel simulator, which I think looks like this, or this, or this. I couldn't find an actual image of one, so we just have to guess. The paper concludes time travel will end up more like the very overmilked Avengers film version of time travel. Using an IBM Q quantum processor, the team studying this created a system using quantum gates or something and demonstrating stuff, running forwards and backwards in time. And when they tested various scenarios of changing the past in the simulation, the present wasn't really affected very much at all. In other words, they think changing the past doesn't change the future. Everything is deterministic. So Sarah Connor's little quote, no fate but what you make, fuck that, that's out the window. Can't sort Hitler out, can't stop cigarettes, can't kick off the electric vehicle revolution any earlier, can't help climate change, none of that. There's nothing we can do. And what's worse is the religious people might be right. And I can't have that, those motherfuckers. So don't believe everything you read. Science is not always right. And religion is definitely not right. I, I don't know what that leaves. Ultimately, our concept of time is linear, like your favorite PlayStation dystopian horror adventure game. Here goes to here, goes to here, goes to here. The Hindus and Buddhists strongly feel we'll all be reborn at some point, a cyclical view of time where your life starts again, which is of course fucking stupid and they should stop being idiots about it. No one is being reincarnated as a fucking daisy. So then if we look at what time is measuring for us, perhaps we can come closer to the truth. Is it measuring what time your Amazon delivery of sex toys is arriving? Ha ha ha, dildos. Is it measuring when the new HQ for the Ku Klux Klan will be complete? Ha ha ha. Ah, racism. Is it measuring when the next thing of happiness for you is happening? Yes it is but those are offshoots of the real measurement. We are measuring as humans how long we have to be alive. We're measuring cell degradation. We are measuring our death. We also use time measurements to tell us about the past. When do we think the universe came about? When do we think the earth formed? When do we think there was a T-Rex? When do we think there was a Jesus? Let's say we were all immortal and our cells didn't degrade. I did a whole video on this, by the way. But let's just say our, our lives never ended. Would they even be called lives? Because surely life implies there's an end to it with death. Would we need Google? Would we need anything to get done on time ever? Actually, we'd need the sewage system so we can shit without problems. Of course though, to maintain a refined life, which many of us have compared to many countries, we would still need to organize ourselves to complete certain tasks to continue this refinement. Would companies have to infinitely increase profits? Would we even have the motivation to move as quickly as we are technologically doing if there were no time limit? Okay, you were a kid and then maybe around 10 years old, you started seeing a clearing in your mind that there's this other life of an adult. So then you get to 20, you're this adult and now the life plan timer starts counting down. Age 20 to 30, ish party it up, knock about the world, get a job eventually, find a long-term partner. Age 30-ish to 40-ish, push out the kids, get the mortgage, more career stuff. Age 40-ish to 50-ish, sort the kids, tick off a few boxes, go to Japan unless you're Japanese and then you go to England, pay off some of the mortgage, kids are in uni or counselling because you were shit parents and so on. This is the time we have, things we do in sections of our lives with this time measurement we've created which has come about because of the time limit that has naturally occurred for our lives. It would be remiss of me not to mention the viewpoint that time is just an illusion, which I think is bollocks because it clearly isn't. This bloke Zeno, all Greeky and philosophy that he was, he had a bunch of paradoxes which supported the view time is not a reality but a concept or measure. Now you could subscribe to that way of thinking if you thought there was something after you die because that would possibly be right in that case. And that's kind of the root of religion in that this life is just one life then your real life begins type thing. 
and obviously you know what I think of that. Space and time, are they infinite? Can we even imagine what infinite time and space means? It's like asking someone foreign to understand subtleties of the British sense of humour. They're okay with American because it's obvious humour for the lowest common denominator, but not here. Sometimes we don't even know when we're joking. That bloke Aristotle, his logic was that the universe could never have gone from nothing to something, so it must always have existed and so it follows time must stretch eternally into the past and the future. And then the more you read into that stuff, looking at cosmology and the Big Bang and how the universe is continually expanding. So if we look back into the past when it was at its most contracted, it was then just a point of singularity and it was probably all white, like in that scene in the Matrix. The more you read that stuff, the more you feel understanding will break down reality as you know it and maybe even ruin your experience of life. Like when we first saw a baby being born and we thought, I just don't think I'm interested in sex at all now. If you stop to think about time, about it possibly being in part an illusion, something we made to make the world work and to bring order from chaos, it puts it right up there with money and celebrities. Somehow as a race, we have valued these almost useless things and made them into something of prime importance. And so it seems there are many groups looking into the different aspects of time and no doubt with the end goal of trying to control it. So what, what if that happens? What if as a species we learn how to control the very fabric of space and time? What then? Oh, remember when the American government, uh, they made that atomic bomb and then they chucked it on Japan. <laughs> that was a bit of a laugh, wasn't it? Hope you enjoyed that one and that you feel like you spent your illusion of time in a productive manner. Although if time is an illusion and it's basically infinite, then I don't know what we're going to do with it because there's only so many things on Netflix and most of it's rubbish anyway. But do like the thing and subscribe to it and see you later.